In this chapter, we will make and edit custom lights in Keyshot by assigning light materials to objects in our scene. We will also learn how to set up and submit final high quality renders from Keyshot. So now that we have our metal material completely set up and the gem as well, we're gonna do a couple final things in Keyshot to do some custom lighting. See how you can see a little bit of this blue up here as well as uh, some of the white lighting that's down here. I'm just gonna show you guys quickly how to do that within Keyshot. So over here, here you can see where we left things off. Uh, just to help illustrate this, I'm going to change our environment color from gray to just a black. And now we're actually gonna be creating our own lights with shapes. You could do it with actual lights in the scene, but we're gonna be using uh, materials that, light materials that are connected to objects. So if you come up here under edit, add geometry, let's do one that'll be called sphere. And this will drop a sphere into our scene. By default, you can see that this new little window pops up. Um, you should have some transforms on it and you can just kind of move this in your scene. And there's a little tiny blue sphere here in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the scale of that as well. You have these different parameters in here that you can click, for example, non-uniform scales, just like ZBrush. It's pretty much very much like ZBrush. You can click on these different axes to rotate or isolate to different axes as well. But I want this to be a little bit bigger. And this is going to become a spherical light that we're gonna have from the bottom that's illuminating upwards. Now, before I actually put a light material on this, I'm actually going to turn our brightness down on our HDRI map from a one to maybe like a 0.5 for now. So we're seeing it gets a little bit darker. Over here on the transform, I'm just gonna click this checkbox to have that go away. And underneath materials, you can see here, there's a whole suite of materials called light materials. If you expand those separately, you can just go to basic different ones, these emissives, IES, etc. I want us to be using area lights in this case. And I think what I'm gonna do, cause I want to be able to see the full names. You can see here, there's like lumen, lumen neutral, etc. What I'm gonna do is just drag the very top one onto our object. And then now you can see that this object is basically becoming a light bulb and emitting a certain amount of light onto our object, as you can see here reflecting in the material and the circular or spherical object reflecting inside the gemstone back here. I think I want to increase the scale of this just a bit more. So I'm going to select the sphere and down here under move tool, I'll click that to get this window to pop back up and then I'm just gonna scale this up a bit more and move this over. And the way that you would increase strength on this is to actually adjust the parameters in the material settings. So if we come to material, area light 20 lumen cool, um, I'm gonna change the name of this to uh, light white. And up here you can see the lumen strengths. You can switch this to a couple different things. You can do wattage, which really blows out the scene because the wattage values are at a different setting, Lux, and then Lumen. So I'll keep it at Lumen. I'm gonna increase this to maybe like a 3000, or sorry, 3000, there we go. So it's a little bit stronger. The other thing I'm gonna do too is I don't want this showing up in our render here, but I do want it in our reflections. So I'm gonna turn off this visible to camera, that will hide it. And then now you can see it's illuminating the scene but it's not seen in the scene except for in the reflections. If we turn it off in reflections, you would see how it gets much darker just right there. So now we have this in the scene, lighting up the base of our object. And now what I think also too, I wanna to get that nice kind of rim light uh, blue here on the side. I wanna turn down our HDRI map all the way to zero just to see how this light is affecting the scene. Now you can see what that light is doing just by itself. All right, so the bottom of this is looking pretty good with the amount of light that we have from the base. Let's turn the brightness back up on the environment light just a little bit though, uh, maybe to like 0.4. And then I think next what we're gonna do is add that nice blue rim lighting that I showed you earlier in the Photoshop file all around the edge here. And I believe that was this. And you guys can add actually whatever color that you want it to be leave it up to you, but I'm gonna do it as blue. So once again, we're gonna go back to the edit section. 
add geometry. This time I'm going to do plane. We could do another sphere, but I just want to show you this with another object. And this more closely represents a lot of times what they call area lights and different CG packages. So I'm just going to pull this over the side. I'm going to non or sorry, uniformly scale this up to get it a little bit bigger. And remember, right now it's just an object, so it is affecting the scene, but it's not producing any light just now. So that's why you can kind of see it reflected in the color here, although it's not illuminating anything. Since we're going to be illuminating this from the back, though, I'm just going to bring it back this way a bit, rotate here on the red, and see if we can get this to fire up along the back. So once again, we're going to drag this light material onto here, the area light lumen. You remember that it's underneath the light section, so just drag that right on top of our object. Also, too, I'm going to commit our move mode here. And you can see this is starting to illuminate from the side. So let's go back to our materials. And this one, let's name it blue or light blue. And this is where we're going to need to change the color in here. You know, you can maybe change it like a really hot blue or something like that. Even this kind of green color is kind of nice. I'm just going to keep it something like this. This feels definitely artificial, but it'll help illuminate what we're trying to do here. I'm just going to say, OK, I'll commit that. Let's increase the strength on that to maybe like 3,000. So now we get that nice bright light on the back. If we were to come here, you can see it's actually illuminating the back, giving it that nice um, light. I mean, this feels like it was, you know, if it was in Blade Runner or something like that underneath some of the neon lights. Kind of interesting. I think the other thing I'm going to do really quick, too, I'm going to go into my scene. I'm going to select that original sphere object, or not the sphere. I'm going to go to the light material white we had, because I remember this color is this... Um, kind of cool gray. So let's just change it to a pure white. Now we get that firing up a lot hotter. So yeah, now we've created some nice kind of edge lighting as well as the front lighting. Once again, with this material, the light blue, we probably want to not have that showing in the camera. So let's do that. And let's turn our environment light off again, just so you can really see what's happening. So now we get the nice edge highlight here. Then if we go to the back, you can see just how the light is affecting this. I'm going to turn our brightness back up on this to maybe like a 0.3. And there you have it. Um, pretty easy to do a lot of basic lighting within a scene. You know, I'm always using the HRI map as my base for things, especially anything that's metallic that you need to have reflections within. And then um, for the light materials, I'm usually just playing around with these top ones up here, but you can have a lot of fun trying a lot of different things out and seeing how it affects your scene. But this is just a really basic intro to how lights and whatnot work, and you guys can continue to explore that on your own. Now, one final thing that I'll show you guys is how to do some final renders. Um, what I am going to do is go to this custom lighting mode. Or actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to click over here on lighting. And ground illumination, global illumination, I'm going to turn that on. Uh, the scene will get a little bit slower, but I wanted to have that in here. And I think this would be a good setting. And if you come over here to image, you can see right now that we're locked to these different resolutions. And that's what you're seeing here, that aspect ratio. But over here, let's go to render and then click on render. This brings up a new image that allows us to pick something like a still image, etc. I'm going to go ahead and just render something out here. I'm going to find out where I want to save it first. I think a good location could be this art folder that I have. So I'm just going to paste that as the folder in here to commit it. And then I will call this um, Amulet Test Render A. And I'll just keep it as a TIFF because that's something that will be open easily in another program. I'm going to increase our resolution here, though. So I'll just change the height and the width to around 2K, um, 2048. This width is going to be around 3,000. That's OK. I just want to make sure I got this at 2K. 
layer passes, all that, not a big deal. Options, um, I'm just going to keep it at maximum samples. You could set it to different things like maximum time, tell it how long you want it to render for. But I'm going to set it at this maximum samples one, which means it'll just keep cleaning up the image until it gets a good uh, render. But it could take a while. This could take like an hour or something like that. So it's something for you to consider. And then whenever you're ready, you just hit render and it'll pop up the window that'll start to render. Right now, um, if you look at the bottom of the window here, it shows you it's a zoom of 54%. You know, if I want to get it 100, you can see that it's going to be rendering quite big. And since I'm doing this as a sample thing, it's going to do that progressive render where you'll see it just cleaning up over time. And up here on the top where it says 0%, uh, this will start to go up until you reach 100% where it'll save it off finally. So I'm going to let this render and I'll be back in a few minutes to show you guys how it ended up looking. And that's the basics before we would do any final compositing that we wanted to really make the image stand out. So we're seeing now in Keyshot, if you look down here at the bottom, it's been rendering for about 25 minutes. It's only about 58% completed. But if we zoom in here, it is really clean. I don't think that letting this render any longer is going to improve the quality. So if you're doing that and you, you see this, you can just come up here to this little button at any time and you click the save icon and we could just change this to a JPEG or something else. So I'm going to do that. I'll save it as um, crest test and in fact I'm going to make a separate folder in here. So I'm going to save that off and I believe it'll keep rendering while I've done that so let's just take a quick look in Photoshop see if we can open up that image. And so here we go. You can see now we have the nice large scale image render of our stone. The only thing is, is since I save that in the middle of rendering, I don't get the advantages of the TIFF, which would have the nice alpha map in between here. So I'm still going to let this render in the end in case I want to change the background, but I just want to illustrate at any point, if you did want to end up saving and rendering this off during the process, you can in case you don't need to wait for the entire thing. And then um, the other thing I'm going to do behind the scenes before the final chapter, which is coming up next, is I'm going to be doing a render of the back of the amulet as well, and then we'll go into our final compositing. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the Amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.